Well, let's start bringing all of this together and create a very, very basic character to explore the best methods for rigging a character or using a skeleton with that. I'm going to go ahead and draw just a very, very fundamental character and teach some of the best methods for doing this. This is going to be for a character viewed from the front. Slightly different methods I'll talk about when you're working with characters, say, from a three-quarter view. The most important thing is to be very deliberate in your naming conventions, both for just tracking what's going on later as the scene gets busy, but also for use with smart bones when we start using those a little bit later on here. I'm going to double-click on layer 1 and rename this body. Now, it's entirely possible to create an entire character on one layer. However, it's not advisable because there are times you're going to want to move one layer in front of another, and while you can do that inside of a single layer, it's certainly a lot more work. So best methods always use multiple layers for your characters. I'll select the Shape Drawing tool over here, and we'll grab a square. And holding down the Option or Alt key, I'm going to click right in the middle of the scene here and just give ourselves a very basic square body. I'll create a new layer, a vector layer that is. We'll name this one Arm Right. Now this will be the character's right arm, not as we look at it from the right side. And I'm going to draw it away from the actual body right here. And one of the reasons for this is how we rig the character and work with the skeleton and control the influences of the bones. So I'll just draw right there, come down, and we'll just have a three-part arm right here. So like a shoulder area, a lower area, and then a hand. Keyboard shortcut T. I'm going to select everything here and move this over, and I actually want to scale it a little bit. So S for scale, we'll make this a little smaller. I'll click off that T again. I'm going to just align these a little bit more so we can kind of see the left and right here as we create these. Now, I don't want to have to redraw all this and get everything set up for the left side of the character. So what I'll do is simply duplicate this layer over in the Layers palette by clicking on the Duplicate Layer button. And we'll change Arm Right to Arm Left. I'll select all since I've got the T or translate tool selected. We'll move this over here, and so that we get the closer parts next to the body, I'll come up to the very top of the screen where we have the ability to flip items. And I'll flip horizontally in this case instead of vertically. We'll move this to the side. I'll do something real similar for the legs here. We'll create a new leg layer, vector layer. And I'll say leg right. And for me working with the naming conventions I like, I prefer to have the body part, then the side of the body it's on, so I can quickly scan for a leg and I don't have to keep reading back and forth between right and left. You sure don't have to do it that way, but that's how I do it. So we'll create an upper leg, a lower leg, and a foot. Really basic, really blocky, that's okay. And once again, we'll go ahead and duplicate this layer and make that leg left. We'll select all, T for translate, we'll move this over to the other side, and I really don't want it close to the body right now, so I'll move that a little further that way. I had this other one under there just for the sake of getting proportions kind of right. We'll flip this with the flip horizontal tool at the top. I'll come back down to leg right, command or control A depending on your system, and I'll pull this over to the side too so it's not adjacent to the body. The last thing we'll do is add a vector layer for the head. Switch to my drawing tools, and we'll give this guy a round head just to do it. Hold the Option or Alt key so I can draw from the center. T for translate, and I'll move that up a little bit. The next thing we're ready to do is to start rigging this character, so let's do that. I'll create a new group, and this group is going to be a bone group. We'll just name this character 1. And really, this is nothing more than a folder that we're going to put everything into. However, it behaves a little bit differently and, of course, has the options that go with working with the bone tools. So dragging everything as a subset of the character now, that's all nestled in there. I can come to the top layer, click on it, and we have our bone drawing tools right here. The one that's automatically selected by default happens to be the select bone. That's not what we're interested in. We're interested in working with the add bone. So what I'll do is click on this. And from the base of the character, as I had mentioned in some other movies, the organic part, or the organic rigging for people, animals, the hip is usually the first bone because it is the inflexible one. Everything else bends around that. So it's kind of the center of the character. Legs, arms, back are all connected to it. 
So to make sure I can see where this is and grab it individually when I want to move the entire character, the common tactic when you're working with rigs is to go ahead and click and drag it to the side so that it becomes very obviously something not like the other bones. And then it's a question of clicking and dragging to get the rest of the bones in. So what I'll do is add two to the back. I'll just come right up to the head and add one. I'll come over to the shoulder and click down. And the order here is important only in the fact that it's best to work from the part nearest the body to the part further away. And that's for the inverse kinematics we'll be looking at later on. I'll click over here on the other side. And then similarly do the exact same thing for the legs, except for the feet. I'll go with the other direction. Now something I've chosen to do with this particular model is to go ahead and draw the character with the arms down. A very common technique is to go ahead and have the arms go out on either side so the character has a T type of presentation. And when we start working with the bending, you'll see why. Neither one is right when you work with three-quarter characters. Many times the arms are down, so one's not better than another. But you will be able to see some of the advantages or disadvantages from working that way. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and deal with reparenting and bone strength.